Hello everyone, today I'm going to be shedding some light on a few different tank ammunition types in the game and how you're using them wrong, how we can fix that. So in the game of Steel Division 2, there are four types of tank ammunition that we can interact with to varying degrees of success. These are as follows, AP or armor piercing, HE or high explosive, APCR or armor piercing composite rigid, and lastly heat or high explosive anti-tank. Let's take a look at what each of these do and how they interact with different armors, distances, and so on. First up, we're going to handle the simple one, AP. AP rounds are the simplest to understand in the game, but they aren't without a few mechanics that are a little less, shall we say, fleshed out by the game proper. Something that we are going to be referencing a lot throughout this video is a concept of penetration drop-off over range. Now, when you look at a unit in the armory, it lists the penetration of the AP shells of the main gun. Where this is misleading is this of the penetration listed within 500 meters. So at engagements of 2 kilometers, the max range of most tank units, it's going to be around 30 to 35% less than that value. So for an example, let's look at the Koenig Tiger, referred to as KT from here on out. The penetration value listed in the armory entry is 230 millimeters. This is the penetration of this unit somewhere below 500 meters. At 2 kilometers, however, the KT is only at 160 millimeters of penetration, give or take. This is still more than enough to get box its counterpart, the KV2, at any range. But don't be shocked when you're looking at the indicator and it says only a 54% pen chance on a 1943 at 2 kilometers. Now that we have that concept down, let's go over one more slightly obscure thing, damage. Each weapon that has an AP value has a damage stat ascribed to it. Now something that the game won't tell you is that each tank in Steel Division 2 has 10 hit points. This is why sometimes you will fire at a Sherman with your King Tiger and it'll survive the shot, or conversely why an 81mm mortar will fall on your KT, killing it on the spot. Unfortunately, as of the time of making this video, there's no way to tell what your tank's hit points are at, but now that we understand they have hit points, we can look at some other things. The King Tigers, from our example earlier, is firing an 88 that does 8 damage. This is the same 88 that the Jagd Panther in Pack 43 fire as well. So, if it is boxing a tank such as the IS-2, even if the shot penetrates the armor, it won't be enough to kill a healthy IS-2, barring a critical effect such as ammo explosion or a soft kill such as crew killed. The IS-2, on the other hand, does 12 damage with its 122, meaning that even though it has a lower penetration chance than the King Tiger, if it does penetrate, bye-bye King Tiger. Now that we have all of these mechanics out of the way, let's take a look at the next simplest shell, HE. For the most part, HE shells can only be used to attack soft targets, such as infantry guns, really anything without armor. However, this isn't always the case. The IS-2, for example, is firing a 122mm shell with a fairly high blast rating, meaning that if you run out of AP during a fight, the IS-2 will begin firing HE at armored targets and try to blast them out. This rarely works, especially on more armored targets, such as the King Tiger or heavier Panthers and Tigers, but it's nice to have that option. The fun part for me is that the IS-2 is modeled in the game's engine as having two separate load values, one for AP and one for HE. What I mean by this is if you're feeling particularly granular, you can fire AP at an armored target, then while the shell is reloading, turn off the AP shells and it will immediately fire HE while still reloading the AP. This is very likely a bug and not intended, but it can help you get the upper hand over some of the hordes of Panthers you're likely to be facing down. This will actually give a two star IS-2 eight rounds per minute of fire rate, albeit half of those probably won't do anything. Next we have APCR. APCR is both a blessing and a curse within this game, and it is likely one of the hardest concepts in the game to grasp or explain, but here goes. You can google what it does in the war proper and how they actually work in reality, but for the purposes of this video we will only be looking at how they work in the game. The shell itself is made out of super dense metal and intended to puncture particularly stubborn targets. That's why for the most part it was implemented on Russian equipment to help them penetrate the heavier tigers and panthers that the Germans were 
sending at them. Now that we have what it does, let me tell you how it works. The high density of the APCR shell lead to it having a lot of drag, and so it has much more substantial penetration drop-off percentage. For example, let's look at the T3485-1944 variant. The APCR is listed at a penetration value of 180 millimeters. That said, at two kilometers, this is actually only 65 millimeters. APCR has a penetration drop-off of about 60 to 67 percent at max range on varying tanks. With all of the units in the game that implement it right now, it is around 1500-1400 meters before it even penetrates more than the AP of that same gun at that range. Your best bet when using such units, the most notable being the aforementioned T-34, the Panther G, and the SU-88, is to just turn off the APCR until you're comfortable with how to use it. More often than not, you'll actually get more out of these units without using these APCR shells. The other thing worth mentioning about APCR is that it only does one damage, as it contains no to very little explosives. This means that it, it might crit and kill the crew or cause an aforementioned ammo explosion, but it if it doesn't, it will take 10 of these shots to kill a tank that it is penetrating. All of that said, using APCR correctly is one of the best things that these units can do. It is a very difficult mechanic, especially in the case of Second Guard, where you have so many T-34s to watch it for it on, but if you can make it work, it is very rewarding. Lastly, I want to take a look at heat shells. These are the reason I wanted to make this video to begin with. I play this game a lot, and more than anything I see people misusing units that have these shells and then wonder why they can't kill heavy tanks on the opposing team. Now the way that this works is basically a big explosion that knocks the top off the tanks or penetrates it in some other way. What does this mean? Well, this means that there's no penetration drop off for these units. The 122 millimeter artillery present in a lot of Russian and a very few Axis decks has 10 heat shells that have a listed 160 millimeters penetration. Here's how that breaks down. At any range, you will have a 97% chance to penetrate a Panther A or G, a 97% chance to penetrate the Tiger E, and a 34% chance for the front armor of a King Tiger. I know that's not terribly high, but it is the highest you're going to get of any tank at two kilometers. What's more is the shells do 12 damage, so if and when it penetrates a tank, it will kill that tank. Heat weapons are in no way exclusive to the artillery unit that I had mentioned earlier. They are simply the biggest and best example of their usage. Other shoutouts in that field go to infantry support guns that contain heat. The SU-122 is present in one Russian deck, I believe. And a few tanks in the support tab also use this shell. Quick disclaimer, the Pac-36 has heat shells also that are listed at a penetration value of 180 millimeters. It is a fantastic option. The issue with this is the heat on the Pac-36 only has a range of 800 meters, and it won't fire them on its own if it has AP shells to fire instead. What I do is disable the AP on these units and just hide them in a forest until they get into range. Typically they'll ping a few shots and might even score a crit on one of the heavier tanks that you're fighting. Well. All that said, thank you for watching this video, and I really hope that I have shed some light on these different values, these different mechanics that aren't really explained within the game, and I hope to see people using the 120mm properly from now on. Alright, thanks. Also, as sort of a postscript to this entire video, I'll be linking a post made on Reddit by a person named Michael, I dare not even try to pronounce his last name, however, I will link in the description below. This is uh, a basic idea of what each tank should be at before engaging other tanks and their frontal armor versus penetration stat at these ranges. It's actually where I got a lot of my numbers, and so credit where it's due. This man is amazing. He's done all the math for us.